yesterday, Hamas released two more hostages. The terrorist government of Gaza is under increasing pressure to release them all. Israel has now shown journalists horrific body cam footage of the barbaric attacks on civilians by Hamas. Meanwhile, U.S. officials reportedly are urging Israel not to start a ground war too soon. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell has more on the escalating crisis. Hamas posted video of members taking care of Yokovid Lifshitz, 85, and Nurit Cooper, 79, before handing them over to the Red Cross in Egypt, which took them to Israel. These people aren't humanitarians. They are bloodthirsty killers. And if they are releasing people, it's because they're being compelled to do so by the pressure we're placing upon them. And as that pressure increases, I believe you'll get more people out. The women were kidnapped on October 7th from kibbutz near Oz, bringing the total number of released hostages to four. Their husbands are still in captivity. We really hope that this is the beginning of the release for the rest of the hostages, which is very important. And more important than their release, we hope that this will continue. At least 220 Israelis are still being held hostage by Hamas, including 30 children. One of them, Ohad Munder Zikri, turned nine years old in captivity yesterday. French President Emmanuel Macron became the latest world leader to visit Israel in a show of solidarity. Macron arrived in Tel Aviv on Tuesday and met with Israeli-French nationals who lost loved ones as well as families of hostages. He also met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israeli President Isaac Herzog. What happened 7th of October is an awful terrorist attack against your people, your nation. It's right. And... It was an immense shock for the whole planet, especially in France. I'm here to express our solidarity today and tomorrow. Earlier, Israeli officials showed journalists terrorist body cam footage of the initial Hamas invasion. Most of the material was not for publication, but officials said it was to combat a Holocaust denial-like phenomenon that is appearing in the media. Of the couple hundred journalists who attended the screening, many of them were brought to tears by what they saw, and some had to get up and leave the room. But the IDF said it was important to release the unedited video to counter the narrative that's being pushed around the world that this is all just a big exaggeration. And I have to say that in 15 years of reporting on conflicts, this is some of the worst, most brutal personal violence I have seen. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi told the nation that they are working together as an iron fist to eliminate Hamas. I want the citizens of Israel to know something else. We make decisions here and in the War Cabinet unanimously. We do so with great responsibility. We do so with deep awareness. We're fighting together and we will win together, only together. Israel's military buildup continues along the Gaza border. The IDF said on Tuesday it struck more than 400 terror targets in Gaza in the last day, killing Hamas commanders and operatives who were preparing attacks. This amid reports that the U.S. is urging Israel not to start a ground war in Gaza until it can get more resources on the ground to deter a wider war and to allow time to get more hostages released. White House National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said the U.S. is not trying to dictate to Israel. It's our view that the Israeli Defense Forces, Steve, need to decide for themselves how they're going to conduct operations. We're not in the business of, of uh, dictating terms to them. Meanwhile, in the north, Israel continued striking Hezbollah targets in response to rocket and anti-tank missile launches from Lebanese territory. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, Chris Mitchell is with us now from Jerusalem. So, Chris, there's a report the White House is delaying the, uh, Israel's ground invasion in order to get more time for hostages to be uh, released. Is that what you're hearing? Yeah, uh, Gordon, uh, also not only uh, hostages released, but actually to bring more U.S. military assets into the region in case uh, there's a wider war with Hezbollah, even Iran. So those two things are happening, and the, it does give Hamas, uh, does give uh, Israel, the U.S., and other 
nations that have nationals that are hostages trying to get more and more uh, hostages out. But what I've been hearing, uh, Gordon, is the fact that this is sort of manipulation by Hamas by releasing two at a time, two more. There's four now. Uh, but that, that plays into Hamas's hands, not only in psychological warfare, but also delaying a possible ground invasion into the Gaza Strip. Is Israel concerned about world opinion? I was frankly shocked by former President Obama yesterday calling for um, Israel to exercise caution and uh, be concerned about being accused of war crimes, that they had some kind of obligation uh, under international law, the rules of, of warfare. And it just seems to me to be such a um, double standard. Hamas is the government of Gaza. Nobody's saying Hamas has violated uh, international treaties. I mean, this is absolutely horrific. I, I, it, what's the reaction in Israel? Well, the two things that Hamas does is a double war crime that we've heard for years, and not only uh, this time right now. First of all, they're firing all these rockets uh, out of civilian areas, using them as human shields, and firing them indiscriminately into civilian areas into, uh, into Israel, much less what happened on October 7th when they massacred about 1,400 Israelis. I think uh, right now the uh, Israeli leadership, and you saw Golant and Netanyahu and Halevi there as the war cabinet, uh, putting on a, a strong face, they have to deal with Israelis, uh, Gordon, who have lost loved ones, have had the worst atrocities since the Holocaust. So I, I think in Israelis' leadership and from Israelis that I've listened to from the north to the south, there's really no appetite for, uh, you know, sort of giving Hamas a break. They feel like this is something they need to eliminate. They've tolerated uh, a, <clears throat> a terrorist state on their borders for more than uh, almost 20 years, since 2005. Uh, Ambassador uh, Oren, yesterday, he, he went through some of the history. In 2005, there were 21 Jewish communities in Gaza, eight to 9,000 Jews living there. Uh, there was a unilateral pullout from, uh, by Israel, leaving the whole Gaza Strip in the hands of then the Palestinian Authority. Hamas took over two years later, and what we had is called Hamastan by some, where you've had rockets in 2008, 9, 2012, 14, 2021, and now this massacre on October 7th. I don't think there's any appetite in Israel right now that they would allow a terrorist state to be on its border anymore. Well, I, they shouldn't have an appetite. My, my, my question is, why is the international community uh, seeming to have this double standard, that you have a terrorist government of Gaza and they're not being held to any kind of international. You don't hear anyone saying we need to try them for war crimes. Uh, we need to arrest the leadership. We need to freeze all of their. At We're not hearing any of that. Why is that? Well, some would explain it this way, Gordon, uh, that it's the Jewish state. And uh, we talked to someone de down in Ophakim where over 50 or about 50 uh, Israelis were, were killed. And he was saying that usually the uh, Israel has about 10 to 14 days of sympathy and empathy from the world, and then things begin to change. Uh, so I think we're seeing that change happen. Uh, and some may, may argue that actually that change happened a lot faster than it should have based on what happened on October 7th. So I think that explains some of it. Uh, you know, the, uh, the international community uh, always, it seems, and this is historically, Back to 67 and 73 uh, or 82 when they did the first Lebanon war, there doesn't seem to be an appetite or there is a double standard uh, for Israel, the Jewish state. Well, it just seems unbelievable. I mean, it literally happened within 24 hours of the attack. Suddenly people were saying Israel was committing war crimes. I mean, that they, Israel didn't even have enough time to bury, let alone find all of the dead. And already you're hearing um, cries of Israel's committing war crimes. And then the buy-in to the Gaza Ministry of Health, which is a propaganda arm of Hamas, saying that 500 people were killed by an Israeli bomb at a hospital. Well, all of that is false, but that narrative went around the world unedited, and it just um, forgive me, I'm, I'm just getting, I'm getting upset. It just doesn't make any sense to me that you would have that kind of du double standard. Let's get to the IDF. They're showing the unedited body cam footage of the Hamas attacks. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, all that we're hearing is true. And some of the journalists who saw it say they've never seen such horrific scenes in their decades of reporting. Why was it necessary for Israel to show that footage? I think it was necessary, Gordon, because uh, the world is, is starting, the memory of what happened on October 7th is starting to fade, and then there's another narrative that, well, maybe it didn't happen, or maybe it wasn't as bad as, as everybody is saying. So I think that was the purpose behind the IDF, to, to show this footage unedited, that is just horrific. Uh, a colleague of mine, Dan Cohen, and a good friend from Newsmax, he reported on it. He was brought to tears. Uh, after seeing it. And so I think the IDF is trying to reinforce to the world's media, it really happened. This is what happened. We're not exaggerating. It was one of the most horrific atrocities that anybody can remember since the Holocaust. And so I think they're trying to reinforce uh, this sort of Holocaust denial uh, that, that has been perpetrated for maybe the last 75 years. They don't want the kind of denial that's going on in social media uh, and around the world happen. And as you, you mentioned, the, the hospital, you know, that a lot of people ran with that story. 500 killed. It had to be an Israeli uh, bomb. And, and really, it really wasn't. And so I think that's all part of the, the battle going on. Someone told me recently that that uh, image of, you know, the, the story that 500 people were killed by an Israeli strike. Uh, in Italy, for example, it was tweeted like millions of times. And the next day or two, when the real story came out, it was tweeted maybe about 100,000. So it goes back to that statement by Winston Churchill that said, you know, uh, a lie gets around the world, halfway around the world, before the truth gets its pants on. Well, CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell, thanks for the analysis. Thanks for your reporting. And please stay safe.